Have you ever wondered what happens to us after we die? It's a question that has intrigued human minds for centuries. In the Islamic faith, the journey of the soul after death is deep and detailed, offering answers that provide comfort and guidance. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel, Nasiha Studio. Today, in this video, we're going to talk about what happens to our soul after we die. What are the things a soul goes through post-death? The departure of the soul. In Islam, the moment of death marks the beginning of a soul's deep journey, transitioning from the physical world to the spiritual realm. This initial phase, known as the departure of the soul, is detailed with solemnity and reverence within Islamic teachings, providing both a reflective viewpoint on the life lived and a foreshadowing of what is to come. Number 1. The Arrival of the Angels At the point of death, angels descend to the dying person. These beings are not ordinary. They are emissaries between the divine and human realms. Arrival of angels for good people. At the moment of death, if someone has lived a good life, angels come to them looking bright and beautiful, like sunlight. They bring a special covering from heaven and a lovely fragrance, speaking kindly to comfort the dying person and help them peacefully transition to the afterlife. Arrival of angels for bad people. For those who haven't lived as well, the angels who come might seem more serious or even a bit scary. They don't bring comforting gifts or sweet scents, but instead reflect the need for the person to face their past actions. These angels might talk about the importance of reflecting on one's life, emphasizing a more solemn and introspective end. Number two, the extraction of the soul. The extraction of the soul from the body is a pivotal moment and is described vividly in the Hadith, sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. For the righteous, the soul is extracted extracted as easily as a drop of water flowing from a water jug, a gentle and seamless transition. However, for those who led lives filled with sin, the soul's extraction is fraught with difficulty and discomfort, akin to the drawing of wet wool through a narrow thimble, representing the soul's reluctance to leave a life of indulgence or wrongdoing. Number 3. The Ascension to the Heavens Once the soul is extracted, it begins its ascension towards the heavens. This journey is not solitary. The angels accompany the soul, heralding its approach to each gate of heaven. For the soul of a believer, the gates open readily, with heavenly inhabitants eager to welcome it based on the good deeds performed in the earthly life. In contrast, the soul of one who was disobedient to Allah's commands finds the gates of heaven closed, a symbolic refusal that emphasizes the soul's failure to fulfill its spiritual obligations. Number 4. The Record of the Deceased During this ascent, a record of the deceased's deeds is proclaimed. For the virtuous, it is announced, Here comes a righteous soul from the earth who brought good deeds. The welcoming by angels and the smooth passage through the heavens are affirmations of a life well lived, encouraging those still alive to reflect on their own deeds. Number 5. The Return to Earth After the initial ascent and affirmation, the soul is returned to earth to await the Day of Judgment. This return is marked by a period in the grave, known as the life of the Barzakh, barrier, where the soul exists in a state that mirrors its spiritual state at the time of death. In Islamic beliefs, when someone dies, it's a serious but also important moment. It reminds us that life here is short, but there's an everlasting life after death. This event encourages people to live good and faithful lives, because how we act and what we believe in this life directly affects how we are treated after we die. The grave as a waiting room. In Islamic belief, the grave serves not merely as a final resting place, but as a critical transitional state for the soul between death and the ultimate resurrection. This stage, known as Barzakh, acts as a barrier or a waiting room where the soul resides until the day of judgment. The experiences within the grave are profound and are reflective of the individual's earthly actions and spiritual state. Number 1. The Entry into the Grave After the funeral rites are completed and the body is laid to rest, the soul is returned to the grave where it is met by two angels, Munkar and Nakia. These angels have the role of interrogators in the grave, questioning the deceased about their faith and their life. The questions typically revolve around one's belief in Allah, the prophets, and the veracity of their faith. The way these questions are answered will determine the state of the soul's stay in the grave. Number 2. The Trial of the Grave The questioning by Munkar and Nakir is a form of trial to assess the steadfastness of the deceased's faith. For those who answer confidently and correctly, affirming their devotion to Allah and the righteousness of their deeds, the grave becomes a place of comfort and light, expanding and filling with a pleasant aroma. Conversely, for those who falter or fail to answer, the grave constricts, becoming a dark and constricted space filled with torment. Number 3. The Soul's Experience in Barzakh The 
condition of the grave reflects the moral and spiritual condition of the deceased. For the righteous, the grave is said to be a garden from the gardens of paradise. These souls experience peace and tranquility, awaiting the resurrection with calmness and in comfort. On the other hand, for those who led lives marked by sin without repentance, the grave is described as a pit from the pits of hell, where the soul undergoes punishment and distress, a precursor to what may follow on the day of judgment. Number 4. Manifestation of Deeds in the Barzakh, deeds from the earthly life manifest in ways that interact with the soul. Good deeds might appear in the form of a comforting companion, a pleasant scent, or a soothing light, making the waiting period bearable or even pleasant. Evil deeds, however, might manifest as frightening creatures, foul odors, or oppressive darkness, making the grave a foreboding place. Number 5. Connection to the Living World While the soul remains in the grave, it is believed to have a form of awareness that is different from the physical senses in life. Souls in their graves are aware of the visits of the living and can feel the peace transmitted by prayers or the distress of neglect. However, this connection does not influence their judgment but serves as a comfort or a reminder of their past life. The Day of Judgment In Islamic beliefs, the Day of Judgment is the culminating event of the soul's journey post-death, where every individual is resurrected to face divine judgment. This day is significant in its scope and seriousness as it determines the eternal destiny of every soul based on their earthly deeds. The Islamic portrayal of this day is both vivid and intense, meant to remind the faithful of the ultimate accountability and the imperativeness of living a righteous life. Number 1. The Resurrection The Day of Judgment begins with the blowing of a trumpet by the angel Israfil at Allah's command. This trumpet blast signifies the end of the world as known and the resurrection of all souls people will rise from their graves, bodily restored, in a state of confusion and disarray, gathering on a vast plain for judgment. The overwhelming nature of this resurrection is designed to strip away all illusions of control, leaving each soul bare and accountable for their actions. Number 2. The Assembly of All Beings Humans, Jinn, Animals and Angels will all assemble in one place, this grand gathering ensures that no being escapes accountability. Everyone, regardless of their earthly status or power, stands equal before Allah. This assembly underscores the justice and universality of the divine judgment process. Number 3. The distribution of the records. Each person will receive a record of their deeds. Those who receive their book in their right hand are those who have acted righteously and are assured of a place in paradise. Conversely, those who receive their book in their left hand or behind their back are those who have failed to live righteously and face punishment. The receipt of these records is a moment of profound emotional intensity as each soul confronts the reality of their earthly conduct. Number 4. The Scales of Justice The deeds of each individual will be weighed on a scale, a symbolic representation of divine justice. This weighing will be precise and meticulous, with every small good or bad action accounted for. The balance of these scales will decide the fate of each soul, emphasizing the importance of every act and intention during one's earthly life. Number 5. The Bridge Over Hell Sirat Following the judgment, each soul must cross the Sirat, a bridge thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword, suspended over the fires of hell. This crossing is symbolic of the final salvation, where the righteous pass swiftly and safely to the gates of paradise, while those burdened with sins may fall into hell. The Sirat serves as a final test of one's faith and deeds. Number 6. The Final Verdict Upon successfully crossing the Sirat, souls enter their eternal abode. Paradise awaits those who are saved, a place of eternal peace, beauty and joy, unimaginable in worldly terms. For those condemned, hell is their destination, a place of eternal punishment and despair as a consequence of their choices and actions. The Day of Judgment, in Islamic theology, serves not only as a reminder of the ultimate divine justice, but also as a call to reflection and moral integrity. It encapsulates the core message of accountability and the transient nature of earthly life, urging believers to strive for righteousness, mercy, and piety in anticipation of this decisive day, eternal abode in paradise or hell. In Islamic theology, the culmination of the soul's journey after death is its eternal abode, 
which is determined by the Day of Judgment. Based on one's deeds, faith and Allah's mercy, the soul will either enter paradise, a place of eternal bliss, or hell, a place of enduring punishment. This dichotomy serves to underscore the ultimate consequences of human actions and the profound moral choices faced during one's earthly life. Number 1. Entry into Paradise For those who are destined for paradise, the entry is a moment of indescribable joy and relief. Described in the Quran as gardens of pleasure, paradise offers a stark contrast to the worldly life, with rivers of milk, wine, honey, and pure water flowing beneath endless gardens. The inhabitants of paradise will experience no sickness, sadness, or pain. They are promised eternal youth and beauty, endless bounty, and the pleasure of Allah's presence. Importantly, the greatest joy for the dwellers of paradise will be the beatific vision of Allah, a reward that surpasses all the physical pleasures of paradise. Number 2. The Reality of Hell Conversely, hell is depicted as a place of fire, brimstone and despair, where the wicked are punished in accordance with their sins. The Quran and Hadith detail various levels of hell, each corresponding to the severity of sins committed. Inhabitants of hell will suffer unbearable heat, smoke, and the drinking of boiling fluids, paired with a diet of bitter thorns and zakum, a dreadful tree mentioned in the Quran. The punishments are both physical and psychological, designed as a direct consequence of one's evil deeds and denial of divine truth. Number 3. The Permanence of the Afterlife The afterlife in Islamic eschatology is eternal. Once a soul enters either paradise or hell, it remains there forever. However, Islamic teachings also suggest that some souls in hell may eventually be forgiven and granted entry into paradise, especially if they had an iota of faith and their sins were not of the gravest nature. This aspect of mercy highlights the complexity of divine justice, which balances punishment with forgiveness. Number 4. Lessons for the Living The vivid descriptions of paradise and hell serve as potent reminders to the living about the transient nature of worldly life and the importance of living according to divine commandments. The promise of paradise is an incentive for leading a righteous, charitable, and God-conscious life, while the fear of hell acts as a deterrent against sin and moral transgression. Number 5. Moral and Spiritual Reflection the eternal outcomes of the soul encourage a deep moral and spiritual reflection among believers. The concepts of paradise and hell are not merely destinations, but reflections of one's life choices and their alignment with the will of Allah. They serve to motivate individuals to constantly evaluate their actions, seek repentance for their wrongdoings, and strive towards a path that leads to divine favor. The teachings on paradise and hell are central to Islamic thought, encapsulating the ultimate justice of Allah. They remind believers of the stakes involved in their earthly conduct and the profound impact of their choices on their eternal destiny. This final stage of the soul's journey is a powerful call to action for all individuals to lead lives of virtue and mindfulness, seeking a favorable conclusion in the hereafter. The journey of the soul in Islam emphasizes the continuity of existence beyond death urging believers to live righteously and seek Allah's forgiveness. The beliefs serve not only to provide understanding, but also to guide the living towards a purposeful life in adherence to divine commandments. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more content celebrating the Islamic heritage. Your support really helps spread these important stories and teachings. We hope that Allah brings peace, happiness and success to you and your family.